what a day. I just beat. Just climb this mountain so that I can, uh, hey, look at that view. It's across the freaking valley. So that I can do a essay out of uh, The Devil's Notebook. I just love being up here, out here. I had to leave the family home for this one because quite frankly, it is a little too intense of a uh, climb. It's maybe too intense for me, let alone them. So you're stuck with just me here, people. But the essay I want to do today is uh, Insane Ramblings by the doctor. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this and then chat about it for a little bit. It's just beautiful up here. Let me pan quickly so you can see what I'm looking at. I don't know, the trees may be in the way a little too much for you to fully get the, the look of it. <clears throat> so, here we go. Myths are necessary. So are man-made disasters, natural disasters, bring people together with no need for contrivance. Man-made disasters, wars, plots, scandals, inquisitions, dilemmas of all sorts, like myths, must be contrived and nourished and above all, self-sustained. For they are essential to man's emotional needs. They are narcotic. The mob requires regular doses of scandal, paranoia, and dilemma to alleviate the boredom of a meaningless existence. What begins as a seedling of reality germinates into a full-blown myth, which in turn picks up constituents along the way who confers substance to it. One morning on the sixth decade of the 20th century, of the common era, a sanctified leader was assassinated under circumstances that observers, both learned and casual, were convinced bore political significance. A large-scale conspiracy was presumed. In reality, the Grand Master of a sect of the Knights Templar, an Inquisitor General, engineered the sacrifice in accordance with the tradition demanding a threefold sacrifice to avenge a grave injustice. The Inquisitor General took the rites of Hiram seriously and brooded upon the dynastic rule of Pope Clement and Philip the Fair, which in the 14th century tor tortured and burned alive the men who held his corresponding office. The Inquisitor General knew that those who stood for all that despised had caused the death of a fair and exalted damsel, one whose demise had killed more than a small pair of his alter ego. To add insult to injury, the murder of the angel from the abyss was sanctioned by one who would usurp his inquisitor's throne if permitted. In his mind dwelt the essence of de Molay, just as others had harbored within themselves the engrams and cellular memory of kindred ones <clears throat> who had gone before. Crazy, of course. Only small and insignificant men are supposed to harbor such quirks. The great are thought to be immune to folly. The moderately wise man knows different. He knows what we are, all crazy. Uh, he knows that we are all crazy, but stronger personalities shelter more elaborate grotesqueries, and the strongest men cry in secret and hurt inside the most. In this entire world of sham and fakery, there is no greater truth. On that day in the month of November, the monarch, whose revels had prompted the death of the exalted damsel, rode through the crowd on his papal, papal chariot. The monarch, whose revel were unlikely those so charitable attributed to him, and whose gaiety was unbridled. The thronging mob, who was long amassed before the green and cap ring upon the knoll. That morn, a secret password moved from lips to waiting ears, a fifth of Hiram Walker for Tubal Cain to toast the morning star. A fifth of Hiram Walker was delivered, and a volley of shots rode the wind that tramps the world. And then the rose, which had been over one year dead, began to bloom anew. Verily, it grew with each succeeding sacrifice until, unrecognized, unrecogn it might depose the sterile virgin and softly glow as the rose of the world. As the Grand Inquisitor, the Emperor of the Hidden Realm, sensed that unfoldment and bore himself knight into the Kingdom of Shadows that he might culminate his threefold retaliation, having wreaked his prime vengeance in Dallas, a time passed until the second tribute was exalted in that very city from where she, had she was taken. And with the second, Azrael came forth from out of the east to bear the sin for the mob. 
Shortly thereafter, as the Earthlings approached the moon, a dark potent in that very east, Eve, did verify the third impending doom, a comely maid who deigned to dally with a blighted consort perished neath murky waters. The Grand Master of the Assassins, having witnessed the certitude of, the, of his vindication, then departed his office and moved into the deepest of all night, and hard by his departure swelled a clamor, and war ended. Yet still the mob cried for blood. And now the mouth of my ravings approaches its own dear tail, and his jaws snap hungrily to grasp that barbed appendage. Myth, cries the mob, give us myth. A still small voice is heard among them that whimpers cajoling, truth, make the myth be true. But a deafening roar ascends, reiterating, elaborating, tell us the scandal of mafia and CIA, of Watergates and chaos and assorted crimes, uh, crises, of shortages and impeachments and silent deaths by secret means. Frighten us with depression and inflation and the impending collapse of societal structures and economic extinction. Tell us of police states and Cromwell reborn. Terrify us. Worry us. Tell us. I've told enough for one night. The dawn is breaking. You have had enough scandal to think about. But remember, all this is madness. What I love about this is that it's referencing real-world events through the frame of insane ramblings and framing it in the way that I'm interpreting it in a way that demands it's exactly what society needs. We need these myths, these contrived uh, conspiracies as a, a populace. We need distraction from our regular lives. We need impending doom on the horizon so that we can cumulatively come together and overcome some, even if it's manufactured, obstacle. It's an interesting way to look at humanity, I think. Because it, re and, and it fits so well with our modern era. We make such a to-do about um, our current political state and how it is, you know, air quotes, absolutely not normal and how everyone needs to keep fresh in their minds that this isn't normal and we shouldn't accept it as thus. And yet, is it that far removed? Is it that separated from other abnormalities we've had in our past, our collective pasts? A president being assassinated in our recent past being beaten like Star Wars and the Empire by the Vietnamese in Vietnam. A Cold War that must have its own resurgence as of recently. Societally, um, politically, we absolutely need these conspiracies. We need these furious, insane abnormalities. Because if we didn't have them, we would instead be focused probably for the worse um, on, uh, you know, the reality of where we are in life instead of where we need to be or, or, or where we need to go to. I really like that idea. Um, I like that it's a requirement for many of us uh, to uh, blind ourselves to, to the reality of what's around us. Because that means those of us who are aware of this can actually benefit from that. Um, we can walk into reality with our eyes open and... Uh, with intention, weave our own insane ramblings for others and control them with it. I mean, this is a grander form of, of lesser magic. And as long as we're moving into it with intention, I mean, it's a net positive, right? All right, well, that's all I'm gonna 
wax on about now. Gentleman just walked off the peak. So I'm gonna go up there and take some photos. Uh, I'll put these up for patrons afterward. Thank you all for uh, kicking it with me on another uh, Stenic essay reading and discussion. Uh, these are brought to you, of course, by you, the patrons. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Bye.